If you ever wanted an idea of just how spoiled Rocco is, this is what Rocco eats. Rocco eats the Blue Basics, which is uh, what Sagan was on. It's really good for, for tummy troubles, which Rocco has had a little bit of in, in his life. So he eats Blue Basics. And then, to go a little step further, there is some pumpkin, some canned pumpkin, which is good for cat stomachs, uh, that gets mixed into it. And then that is topped with salmon. My parents actually cook up uh, a plain uh, salmon uh, fillet and chop that up and it gets sprinkled on top. So then you've got this, this mix of the Blue Basics and pumpkin with just a little sprinkling of salmon on top. But it helps his bow issues. Are you hungry? Huh? Are you ready to eat? Come here. Yeah. <laughs> There you go. Is that what you want? Oh yeah, that's good. That's really good. I'm gonna eat that salmon off the top. This is really, <laughs> the AC over here is really loud. At some point, I say at some point, but I think multiple times over the years, it's been replaced and it's, it sounds a bit like a, like a train. By the way, hello everyone and welcome to, um, welcome to Tuesday. Uh, I'm over here by myself. Um, today. Mal, uh, Mal is not feeling well. And to be honest, I haven't been feeling super great. I'm not sure exactly what we ate, but something has made us a little sick on our stomachs, but Mal's been taking it not as well as I have. Probably because I'm just used to always feeling <laughs> that way. So, um, she wasn't feeling well, so uh, after breakfast stream, uh, she decided to lay down. And uh, I, I came over here to take care of Rocco. So he's, he's set. Um, now that he's got some food, I'm going to scoop his, uh, his litter boxes, and then I'll go back over, and, um, you know, hopefully Mouse will be feeling up to eating lunch, because that's an important meal if you want to, you know, try and get up, get moving, get, get some things done, but we'll just have to see how she feels. So the good news is Mal's up, feeling a little bit better after, yeah. uh, after a rest. And the other good news is that lunch looks really good because um, I was mentioning the other day that um, whenever my parents uh, left town, they had some fresh stuff that they had bought that they gave to us so that it wouldn't go bad. Some of those things included sourdough bread and a tomato. So we had enough stuff to make a grilled cheese sandwich, but we didn't have sliced cheese. So while I was over there feeding Rocco, I just stole some of their cheese because they have cheese. So that looks incredible. The texture of this bread is amazing, yeah. by the way. It's like perfectly crunchy and like the bread's perfect. I mean, that's a good looking sandwich, but also sourdough is like an absolutely delicious bread. So I'm gonna eat this. Uh, we're gonna watch the, uh, the Indie World Showcase. Um, which debuted earlier today uh, for Nintendo, and then I'll be uh, I'll be doing first twenty today. Get a handful of games are going to be playing. Hey pal, you good boy? Yeah, we're getting your food ready. It's dinner time. You excited? I hope so. So we're already back over here for the evening feeding Rocco. Uh, I did the first twenty stream. Played five games tonight. And uh, as I've been doing once a month, I'm going to tell you about the games I played in August 2020. This will be pretty brief. I played five games, but uh, none of I didn't play any of them for particularly long. I didn't have any RPGs or anything this month. Um, first game I played was Ion Fury. This is from the same makers of Duke Nukem, and it is designed to feel like Duke Nukem. Someone in chat said, this is basically 2020 Duke Nukem. And yeah, you, uh, you play as a uh, woman this time around. But this, the gameplay style is all very, very similar. The graphics are very, very similar. Um, it was fun. It was genuinely enjoyable. But it's it's Duke Nukem. Like, I don't have to sell you on anything else. Like, you either, you either like that sort of game or you don't. If you do, you should probably try Ion Fury. It was, uh, it was fun. Um, then I played Skater XL. Skater XL is an interesting one. Um, oh, and it's also worth noting, Ion Fury was a dev key and also Skater XL was a dev key. Uh, Skater XL, it's trying to be Skate, EA's Skate series. And it's good, like, the, the 
the physics part of it, the the board part of it, everything surrounding the actual skateboarding portion of the game is really good. It's, I mean, it feels like skate, but even better, in my opinion. But overall, the product lacks polish. And the game is presented as basically just a sandbox. And like, there's challenges that you can do, but it's just basically a bulleted list of like things to try. And there's no structure to it whatsoever. So there's no like overarching like campaign or anything. And maybe that won't matter for some people. Maybe they just really want a true blue skateboarding simulator. And if so, then maybe you should check it out. But that's the thing. Like, it's not quite skate. Like, I would rather play skate, which may not. I mean, it's 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 comparable. They'll be comparable to Skater XL and has this other, like it has like a campaign and it has, it feels like things are a little more alive as opposed to just drop you in a map with the physics based thing. That being said, I'm not 100% sure that that's going to come to YouTube yet. And the reason is it was full of copyrighted music. And for whatever reason, I did not have the forethought when it started to turn the music off. If I would have done that, then we could have just put in our own music, but I didn't do that. So what we're going to do is we're going to put it, we're going to take the whole thing, put it onto YouTube and see if there's any, well, there's definitely going to be problems. There's definitely going to be claims, but see if there's going to be anything blocked because one track can cause it to be blocked potentially worldwide. If that happens, then we just won't upload it because it'd be pointless. Uh, and also it's muted on Twitch. So it would have, it'll basically have existed solely for people who were there live. If, if you're super, super into skateboarding simulation, skate, Skater XL might be worth checking out. But, and like, it, it, there, that part of it is fun, but it is missing some of that polish. So your mileage may vary depending on how you feel. Uh, then I played Cat Quest, uh, which has been sent in by a uh, patron named Ben. And um, I really didn't know anything about Cat Quest. I had seen some images of it, and I was surprised to learn that it had like, nearly a perfect score on Steam. Like, people loved this game. So I loaded it up, and it took a few minutes to get into it, but then I was actually really into it. I was like, this game is this game is really fun. It's super simple. It's not terribly complicated, but it's just genuinely enjoyable. Like, it's it's a action RPG with uh, equipment and um, magic and quests, and it's... You know, it's a little mindless going from point A to point B, but it's done in such a cute, stylized way that it's it's worth playing. My one um, request by the end, uh, after I had done the actual first 20, was like, man, that would have been so much better with two-player co-op. But then chat was quick to point out that uh, apparently there's a sequel, and the sequel supports co-op. So that's the only way... That, that, that was the only way that the game could be, you know, even more fun was... Um, going through that with a with a friend. Uh, after that, I played Reventure, which uh, had been given to me by uh, MTAN. And Reventure, Reventure is such an interesting concept. It's, it reminds me a lot of Minute, where you, you die and you come back and you have to like, you only have a minute to live and you're trying to like figure out where you want to go. It's, it's not identical to that, but it, it feels similar in that there are 100 endings and you'll play the game for a few minutes and you will almost certainly hit one of those endings. And it's, that alone, I think, is an interesting concept. It's very funny. It has a really great sense of humor. But then to go above and beyond, there's a lot of things that, like, change in each run. So a lot of it's static, but then, you know, you may be reincarnated as, like, a dog. And, like, that's worked into the story a little bit. There was one point where um, I had become a cat, and whenever, uh, whenever I passed away as the cat... I came back and there were cats everywhere where there hadn't been before. So there's a lot of attention to detail. And again, the game is very, very funny. So if you're looking for something that's going to make you laugh, um, I would I would definitely recommend Reventure. It was, uh, it was a very fun time. And I don't know how long it would take to get all 100 endings. I played it for like 20 something minutes and I think I got about five, maybe I got more. Maybe I was up to like eight. I don't know. I was I was moving through it pretty quickly, but it was enjoyable. And then the final game of the evening was Kill It With Fire. Uh, this has been in early access for a while. 
Um, Kill It With Fire is a game where you wander around, uh, uh, I mean, at least at the beginning, a home setting, and there are spiders, and you must eliminate them. And you just get increasingly bizarre, over-the-top dramatic weaponry to do this. So at the beginning, you're, you're hitting them with a clipboard, and then you get like uh, a homemade flamethrower using a, a hairspray can. Uh, and then, so you're like setting the entire house on fire. Then you find a gun and you're like shooting at them with a revolver. Later on, you find, uh, you know, a shotgun. You've got uh, access to like C4. So, you know, it's it's very crazy. Um, and I had seen trailers of the game and it made me want to play it. And the trailers are all, are all very fast paced. Um, Kill It With Fire in order to make it a game and to make the game, you know, actually enjoyable, has to slow that pace down quite a bit. Like, you're consistently running into spiders, but it's much more meticulous than the trailers would probably make it seem. So it's a little slower. But um, there was a lot of a little attention to details, which were which I thought were fun. The uh, the soundtrack, actually, or at least the, the ambience, is really well done. It actually feels both comedic and also a little bit on the horror spectrum um and also it probably goes without saying but you know if you don't like spiders i don't know that you could play the game <laughs> you probably wouldn't enjoy yourself very much and those are the games i played um of all of them i was probably i was probably most impressed with um cat quest cat quest was cat quest really caught me off guard for, uh, for how much I enjoyed it, for how simple it is. It was really a simple concept. And then um, I did really like, I did like Skater XL. I wish there was more done to it, because to me, it still feels a bit like an early access game. And it's getting ready to launch, like, officially on consoles. And again, I'm playing it, and I'm like, this, this feels like this should be more. But again, what there is, the structure of the, the skateboarding mechanic stuff is fun. It just doesn't feel like there's enough there. Um, and then maybe, uh, maybe Reventure, which was just cute. It'd be fun to maybe go through that with, with Mal on a stream at some point. But they were all good. They were all, uh, they were all fun. Did he get all his foods? He didn't dry yet, but I was letting him eat the wet first. Okay. Sure. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and end it there. Uh... You know, it's been fun to come over here and help take care of Rocco and just, you know, get a chance to see him and hang out with him a little bit. He's a good boy. I haven't seen him much this year, obviously, so it's nice to know that he's doing all right and he's doing okay. We'll be back in the morning or afternoon or something. I know that his feeding schedule is very different than what we're feeding him. I think he's normally fed like four times a day and we're feeding him twice. We're feeding him in the morning and the night. But he's getting the same amount of food, so he's, he's handling that all right, it seems. Thank you so much for watching, and as always, let's meet back tomorrow, shall we?